Yo, Dead Mouse. Keep the Ferrari running. Be there in 20, yo. Five exclamation mark. Oh, sorry, I was just, just texting someone back there. Um, anyway, we're looking at Isotope Ozone 6.1 today. There you go. Because um, basically they updated it. Isotope being the cool company that they are, took on board all the feedback, which was very valid feedback. And they were like, cool, let's give you back some features that you kind of liked in Ozone 5, but we got rid of. And let's give you a few more just because, well, we can. So that's what's happening in Ozone 6.1. So it's all about the differences from 6 to 6.1 because they threw in a few new things. So the thing that really, well, one of the two things that annoyed me from the jump from Ozone 5 to Ozone 6 was the lack of module kind of presets for individual modules. They, for some reason, just ditched it when they went from 5 to 6, but they're back. Check this out. So for example, the most common time I use this is for the Exciter module. So we'll do click to insert module, Exciter. And then what we can do is stick it somewhere useful in the chain, somewhere like there is probably perfect. And then what we can do is simply click this little button here. Bring, click. Where's the click not working? Why isn't it working? Oh, it's coming out on the other screen. Oh, where's it gone? Other screen, other screen. Over here, here you go. So then it brings up this kind of excited preset and that way I can choose or kind of cycle through each one of these presets kind of without having to load it as an individual module plugin. Because what I was having to do with Ozone 6 before is pretty much do my EQ in Ozone 5 and then I would use the individual exciter module from Ozone 6, which does have presets. And then I do the rest of my Ozone with the whole new thing. It's just, it's too much hassle. Um, so now they've got module presets. I'm happy again, which is pretty good because especially with Exciter, it's just a lot quicker to cycle through these, see which kind of variation of band and kind of algorithm comes up with the effect you want without having to kind of experiment by setting up loads of bands, setting up the mix, the amount, choose a different one. It's just a lot quicker to cycle through presets, see which creatively and functionally does what you want. So that was pretty cool. And then they gave you kind of two new features that are brand new. So the one that I'm most excited about is in Dynamics, this adaptive release. We'll just get rid of that, simplify it. So click, click, let's focus on Dynamics. So Dynamics. So adaptive release is reasonably simple. It's the release control on the compressor is automatic. So You've got your kind of transients and your sustains notes. Sometimes it's hard to find the balance of what's the right the right release setting for lots of different things within the same track because maybe one release setting works well for one particular sound, but maybe not for another sound. So adaptive release is kind of adaptive and it kind of uses magic to figure out what the best release is at any, any given stage and then adjusts it and moves it around and does cool magical shit. So let's, ex well, not experiment, let's show you something. So. I haven't actually done any sound yet. So we've got a little bit of a loop from a unmastered track, uh, work in progress e styly thing off my album. Sounds like this. Turn it down a bit. So what we do, we've got auto gain turned on for the compressor, that's really worth noting. Now we'll pull down the compressor, probably set a ratio, maybe, maybe one and a half or 1.4. Just do a little bit of a gentle squeeze, like a little bit of a massaging. We're not going smash, we just want to squeeze it a bit with a compressor. And in fact, we only want one band because I'm not a fan of multi-band compression on the master, to be really honest. So um, yeah, I'll pull this down and you'll hear how it's, it's kind of really nice, it works. And we haven't even changed this compressor setting at all, it just kind of does it. Pretty smooth. And off. And on. Pretty cool, right? I really like that adaptive release. It just yeah, it just works really well. It saves saves trying to dial in the release setting and then have the release setting not work for other points. Pretty cool. Definitely worth checking out. Big style. So in the final of the main three things we're covering as the in terms of what difference from isotope 6 to isotope 6.1 is, is this tube button. 
which has got nothing to do with tubes. It's to do with the limiting algorithm that is used in the maximizer setting. So I always talk about IRC3 as being the most awesome limiter algorithm ever for just being transparent and it's short for intelligent release control. So it's constantly kind of refining the release setting for the limiter to kind of just be really transparent and allows you to crank it really hard without really coloring the sound. But if you do want to color the sound a little bit, um, there's this tube setting, which is distortion or saturation or coloring or driving. You can call it whatever you like. It's all the same thing. And it's just a different approach. It's certainly not as loud. If you have the threshold at, say, this level here, so... A bit louder. I said it, say, here. And compare that to IRC3, that same point. Oh, play. Both algorithms are working pretty hard at that particular point, but you can certainly see that IRC3 at the same threshold is louder, but tube sounds a little bit nicer. So it's always going to be a case of trying different thresholds in different tubes to kind of, or different different algorithms, different it just gives you another option basically. Um, sounds different. Some tracks, I reckon it'll work really well for some style of mixes, some mixes not so much, but it just gives you another option, which is always nice. Options are usually a good thing, uh, except IRC1 is pretty much never needed unless you're running like some sort of 40-year-old computer. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool, right? Uh, gives you something else to play about with. Uh, a little bit distortion vibe, if that's the sort of thing you want to go for. But again, might not want to use it, might want to use it. Either way, it's all good in the hood. And I think that's pretty much it for the difference from 6 to 6.1. There's one or two other little things like you could select a region of the waveform, but I can't remember where that is, so not going to tell you. So ignore that shit. Um, yeah, bit more play. Hope you enjoyed.